The business of operations management is difficult, particularly in large enterprises like banking, insurance, and other services companies with teams of hundreds and thousands around the globe. Now add in recent pandemic forcing the workplace to change forever. Managers and employees are under immense pressure to get work done, while also finding ways to balance performance and well-being. The complexity is building, and it can be difficult to find the answers. This podcast, AO On Air, partnered with ActiveOps, is designed to help identify areas that will help employees, managers, and senior leaders find solutions to the challenges within operations management. The future of work will take all departments, such as HR, IT, and ops, aligned along with a steady dose of innovation to succeed. We'll bring you topics, thought leadership, and simple plans to help lead your teams into the future of work. A hybrid work world that will learn from one another and truly act globally, breaking down the silos of older management models for new ways of working. Welcome to the journey. Now let's begin. Hello and welcome to AO On Air. My name is Michael Cups uh, with ActiveOps and we're excited to be talking with some of our product team. Usually, uh, we like to talk to all of them, but in particular today, we're talking to Ian Carter, who who heads up our our view on uh, Control IQ, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. Uh, Ian resides in uh, the UK. Welcome, Ian, to the broadcast. Hi, Michael. Thanks for having me today. Excellent, excellent. Well, uh, why don't we start with maybe a short uh, intro to you, a a bio. You know, I, I think you have operations background. You certainly have a data background. So maybe just a little bit more about you. Yeah, sure. So I've been with VaxWops for just over 15 years now. Uh, and during that time, I've pretty much done everything within the company. So I started off uh, rolling out our, our product and our methodology through different customers around the world. Then I've moved through the company into relationship management and now into, into product, where I um, oversee the, um, one of our main product lines called Control IQ, and also head up the insight and innovation uh, team as well, which is our sort of R&D function. Excellent. I'm, wanna, I'm anxious to talk about that as well. But let's start maybe with the control IQ uh, segment of, of your role. Um, could Maybe in a short elevator pitch or just how you would describe it, what, what is control IQ? So at its heart, control IQ is a, it's a tool that's designed to help uh, teams, departments get the most out of each and every day. And it does that by helping them forecast and plan. Uh, spot capacity or opportunity to do more or, or, or extra work, and then leverage that between teams so that it's all about helping each other out, about spotting capacity and then reviewing performance so that people can learn how to be better each and every day. Yeah, and, and it seems like the bigger the team, the more geographically dispersed, probably the more value they get out of. It's kind of one of those incremental things that the that, that expands with, your, with as your team is bigger, you're going to get more value out of that. Yeah, definitely. I think when, as soon as you add on more and more departments, there's more and more opportunities for you to, to kind of leverage resource, especially when you start looking further forward than just today, this week, this month. You can really identify opportunities where you can cross skill and move work to make the, the flow of, of, of output a lot more consistent across a, an organization. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, let's stay on the topic of control IQ for for a bit. You know, we you you've said you've been with the company for fifteen years. Obviously, you've seen a lot of evolution of the product. Uh, but from what everything I read, I read release notes and some of the developer blogs. Uh, I mean, it looks like you guys have just hit a a rhythm with putting out new innovations with control IQ. Maybe you could share a little bit about that. Oh yeah, this year the, the development and product teams have done an absolutely amazing job. Um, you know, every couple of weeks, there's, you know, evolutions of all of our, our features hitting, hitting the ground. But if I look back over the past 12 months, I think there's probably two that uh, kind of stand out. Um, the first of these is our sort of interacting, uh, interactive load balancing board, which is a, a tool that helps department managers or central planners look at a wide number of teams and departments, spot opportunities, and then make decisions there and then about the movements in people or work so that they can uh, you know, get on with the day-to-day of, of managing their, their teams. Um, so that's, that's gone down really, really well with our, our customer base. Another new feature that's about to hit the ground in a, in a couple of weeks is our um, sort of new fly-by-five um, sort of dashboard that's going to be available when people first land on the, kind of, or first log into the product where they will see pretty much five measures that give them a great view of how their 
organization, their department or their team is, is performing right now and has performed over the last week, last month or last quarter. So nice. there and there, you know, as soon as they log in, they can see if they're making the right decisions each and every day. Oh, wow. Really, really, wow that's, a, that's exciting. And is that targeted at, say, the like a senior director uh, VP level or is that the frontline managers? That's an exciting kind of view. Yeah, so it's it's um, we originally um, sort of designed it with the, the kind of the senior user in, in, in mind, so the, the kind of the senior exec. Um, but we realized that every, at any level in the organization, they'll get value from it because it, it not only brings together, you know, different uh, metrics into, into one place, um, but it just provides a really, really helpful just snapshot, which kind of then sparks questions about where they need to go elsewhere in the tool and, and kind of helps them spot what what issues and, and challenges they, they need to focus on. Well, and and, it, and it's right there. You said when they log in, they can see how they're doing last week, a uh, month before. And I think, uh, you know, when we think about managers in, in operations, they spend a lot of time looking for data. And, and, and this seems like a solution to get that data to, their, to them so they can move on with other things, right? Exactly. Yeah, they can, they can just have a look. If everything's green, fantastic. If there's an amber or red, well, they can just immediately see, you know, where within their where within their organisation should they ask another question on, yeah. and then they can just you know dip in there, see who's see which needs to be explored or, or investigate a little more detail, and then you know ask a question of the of one of their reports. Um, so yeah, it's absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, that, that's great. And I gravitated to that because it was a, a shiny object. But uh, the loading yeah. board, we shouldn't skip past the loading board. I mean that. Automating the loading activities is, is a big time sink in companies today that don't have that kind of automation. Is that fair to say? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the, the, the principle behind the loading board is that, again, at, at any level of the organization, you can, you've got a view where you can kind of see, you know, you know day by day, month by month, which areas are, have got um, more people than they need to do the work that's coming in or less people than they, than they need. And then by interacting with it, they can they can move people and, and work about so that they can actually again make the best out of it every day, uh, use the capacity to to either you know work on extra projects or or, or um, improve service or improve quality. You know, choice is up to up to them about how they want to use it. Yeah, um, it's um, you know just really really visible yeah. and um, demystifies you know where the opportunities lie. It's it's absolutely absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and that's that's probably even more sensitive today because we've just come off you know pandemic type thing and still transitioning into different ways of working and and so there's a lot of unknowns that that may pop up for managers along the way. De definitely, and and, uh, and that's the thing. I think that's where some of the the work that the insight innovation team are also doing kind of yeah. comes in, where we're looking at putting in more um, sort of data science, machine learning into our tools to to kind of help them, you know spot some of these yeah. you know, unknown trends uh, so they can, again, make the right decisions about, about unfolding events. Yep, yeah. Well, and I want to get to that uh, lab in just a moment. The, um, but let's talk about the data. You said there's five-by-five five data, but there's also data that because of the nature of us and our application seeing operations that we're able to start benchmarking uh, relative to segment, whether it's an industry or region, et cetera. Could you talk a little bit about Ops Index? Yeah, sure. So um, about two years ago, um, we recognised that one of the things that we can add, we can do to add value to our customers is give them insight into to how well they are um, managing their operation compared to to their peers. Um, I think one of the things that we we saw is people know how good a manager they are compared to other teams in their organisation, um, but it's very, very difficult to compare yourself and your organization with, with, um, with other, peop other people in other countries. So we kind of created the Ops Index, which um, is basically a, a, a way that we assess how each customer is performing against what we would say is best in class um, uh, targets across a number of different dimensions. And then by comparing their performance against these these targets, we can then kind of give them a, an overall score and end up with a kind of a league table, which allows you to kind of see how you stack up against everyone else in the world. So 
here in the UK, we obviously like, you know, like soccer and football. So it's, it's a bit like the, the kind of the Premier League table. Um, so you can kind of say, okay, well, here's the league table for, for this year. And, yeah. and this year we use that to, um, uh, to, to actually award our customers uh, you know, best in region and best in segment, uh, because again, we can kind of yeah. slice the table by by different industries, different countries, different regions, so that you can get a, a true comparison against um, you know uh, like for like organisations. Yeah, it's interesting because they, they they are very proud of where they where they rank on that league table, as you mentioned. Uh, I would say I was at a conference last week with one of the winners in the U.S. and and they were just elated about it, and I saw some of the press from the. From the award ceremony in in London as well, it's just it's great to be recognised, but it's also great to to actually know where you stand relative to your peer group. I think exactly, and it's it's objective as well. So it's it's one of those measures where you can kind of say you know, based on the same criteria across all the different customers, it's not based on you know, kind of the findings of a of a like a of a panel or anything like that. It's based on you know purely based on the data. And how people are performing are performing against these targets, you know, right. these organisations, these departments are best in class. Um, yeah. So it's, you know, it's absolutely great, great to see. Um, and uh, it's hopefully one of the things which our, our customers value um, as a service that we provide. Yeah, and I'm guessing that they can gear up and uh, they've got time to react and get their their scores up before next year's awards too. So that's good. Yeah, definitely. definitely. It's, uh, it's good and, and that's that's the thing it's uh and and what we're seeing is those customers with 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 good scores um you know really really you know function well and perform well yeah well let's yeah. let's stay with the data theme now because that's that obviously is a direct benefit to the to the customers using control iq that they get this index and and the five by five you know all of these are using data for managers to make better decisions uh, but now, like we said, there's a press release recently introdu introducing the Innovation and Insights Lab. Um, and I know you have a tight connection to with that. So there's a lot of opportunities. Everybody talks about AI and ML, and they're, they're, that, that, those two letters are thrown around just about in every tech company these days. But tell us a little bit about the opportunity. Well, I think the opportunity to, to use ML in, in operations management is huge. Um, if you want to think about the fact that you know, not only is it forecasting work, it's assessing performance, it's identifying trends, it's it's a fundamental skill of, of operations management. Um, but one of the things that, that came out of the Insight Innovation Lab is the kind of the, the first sort of uh, sort of prototype, as it were, was looking at the, the challenge of how would you work out um, a realistic expectation or a standard time of activities when you're, you're taking data from multiple places. So if you've, if you've got a system which just captures the, the kind of the output that people are performing um, and it, in this comp in this, uh, complete system, you can look at things like start and stop times to, to identify standard times. But when people are doing work from many, many different workflow systems, you've got different channels of, of email, of, of, uh, of, of instant messaging coming in, which are asking people to, to do different work. You know, getting a standard time, which takes into consideration all these different interruptions and uh, and breaks in the, the kind of the, the flow, can be really really challenging. So what we did is we kind of took that problem and went, well, what can we do by I guess applying a bit of data science to it uh, to come up with the realistic expectation. So we've ended up with a a lovely approach that that means that if you can provide us with uh, the data for all the work that people have done in, in a day and the, the kind of the time that they've taken to, to kind of, you know, do all of that work, not a particular task, but the entire work. We end, we can we kind of run some algorithms to come up with a, you know, a set of standard times for all the different activities that, that you've done. Um, and obviously, the more data we have, the more days of data, the more people, the more accurate the, the, kind yeah. of the standard times are. But it's a, it's a really neat application that, and a, and a great first step and a great first prototype out of the out of the new team. Yeah, and what I like about it is it's really practical because if you think about just planning, any anybody that's planning anything, you if you don't know what to what to plan for, at least what to expect, then you could be way over or way under in your expectation, and it could have bad effect on either employees or you don't get the work done, so your customers are unhappy. So I mean, it's just it's really a practical usage, it seems. 
It, indeed, and and I think as well compared to kind of the, the classic stop watching, you end up with you know a realistic time based on people actually doing the work, yeah. uh, actually working in an environment where they are interrupted and they are doing different different things, rather than something which is just a, a perfect um, time where there's no interruptions and, and yeah, and, uh, yeah, a, a very um, you know, simple item that they're working on. So it's a, it's a great way of just, you know, solving that problem of complex work, British expectations, um, without having to interrupt the, the flow that people are doing to, to kind of produce the, the work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The employee experience, Ian, is, is obviously something very important. The, um, the, do you see that the experience of the managers are being impacted or, or will need to be impacted? Because it, it seems to me through the pandemic, especially, we we'd had a, we talked a lot about it, the employees and they had to work from home and they had their kids and they had all the challenges there. They also Then we talked about the companies and the impact of the companies trying to maintain business and new digital channels. There was not a whole lot of talk about the managers in the middle, but they were faced with both sides of that. They had to react like their employees did and figure out how to work from home. They also had to meet the company expectations. And, and it sounds like with the innovations that you've talked about and the, and the opportunities ahead, it's about helping that middle layer of management do a better job. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, that middle layer of management do, do a better job. I think the, the other thing about that, you know, the, kind of the, that middle layer of management is, you know, during the, the pandemic, we've not only seen them having to, to, to learn how to manage in a completely different way, we're also seeing an, a massive increase in, in change programs kicking off. If you know, you kind of think about, you know, sort of uh, RPA initiatives kicking off, you're thinking yeah. about massive digitization, you're thinking about actually just the, the toolkits required to work remotely. It's, yeah. you know, it's huge different, different change programs coming in. And, and more often than not, that tier are also responsible for managing those projects. Yeah. So what we're seeing is that that community is becoming really time poor. Yeah. Um, and it, and it, it you know, I, I saw something coming out from Microsoft earlier in the week where they were talking about um, the fact that the number of meetings has increased by 250% you know, over, the, over the pandemic. But if you're a manager and you have to be in each of those meetings, yeah. that, that means your day is, is spent back to back in Teams or Zoom calls. Um, and what that then means is we need to have better tools that, that, that nudge, that prompt, that highlight the changes rather than, you know, relying on individuals with limited time scouring yeah. data sets because the data is growing exponentially, yeah. but people's time isn't. So we need to really, you know, um, help them make more sense of the data that is available to them and, and give them, yeah. you know, sensible insight. Almost the autonomous driving operation, huh? So, so to speak. <laughs> it, it, indeed. I mean, one of the, the kind of the key, the key um, sort of key vision elements that were practical for the companies is around uh, helping automate management processes. And that is all about so that, managers can spend more time with people delighting customers yes. rather than, you know, carrying out routine sort of management processes. It's that, you know, if we look at it, what bits could we automate so that people can spend time with people? Yeah. Uh, what bits can we do so we can highlight successes that we can celebrate the, the improvements that we can identify the, the, the wins and the, and, and just the, the fantastic jobs that, people around the world are doing yeah. rather than worrying about you know what you know what you know what the, the data says in the report for and looking for that one tiny little bit of yeah. of, of truth in a in a sea of a thousand numbers um so, yeah that's yeah. that's incredible the, the the pressure that's going to be put on the that that operations teams um because we had to figure out frictionless models of customer support and digital ordering of everything 
I think consumers are probably expecting things faster and frictionless. And then, but the operations, you know, also have to change. And it, it was a kind of an interesting paradigm. I think, I think all the things you mentioned, the, the automations, the ML learning standards, things like that, it just is going to give the, is going to give managers better opportunities to, to manage, like you said, and I don't know how you manage that meeting schedule. I'm sure your meeting schedules like that every day too, from start to finish, you're on a team's call, right? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, exactly. Well, perfect. And I really enjoyed the conversation. We covered a lot of ground. If somebody wanted to pick up conversations and learn more about Control IQ or talk with you about the lab or something, how, how would they find you? Uh, if they look for me on, on LinkedIn, uh, that's that's probably the best bet. So uh, if you you find uh, the Axpops LinkedIn page, you should be able to find me from there. Yeah, excellent. And if they want to see more about Control IQ, there's forms on the website that they can fill out to get a demo. And I'm sure one of our regional teams will be happy to get in touch with them for that. So, Ian, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. I really enjoyed talking with you. Thank, uh, thanks for taking the time. I know it's getting in the evening your time. Uh, for everybody else, uh, there's more information on ActiveOps.com. You can always go check out the resource hub there to download information, white papers, see videos. You can see this, this video again if you'd like to share this with one of your teammates. Uh, you can also go to AOTV to see uh, all of the, the inventory of podcasts and, and instructional videos about our products. Uh, we, en we enjoyed the conversation. Thank you so much, and we'll see you soon. At ActiveOps, we call it Management Process Automation, or MPA. MPA helps managers make better decisions by providing a consistent, easy to understand view of capacity and productivity. MPA does the hard work of consolidating information, forecasting and planning, and even gives you visibility of skills and capabilities across your enterprise. Your managers can make decisions based on a complete picture of their operations and then get back to leading. As work progresses, MPA helps managers spot problems early and deal with them proactively, celebrate successes properly, and match resource to workload in real time. By making managers more effective, MPA reduces operational costs. Best of all, the right MPA tools make it possible to deliver all these benefits across global enterprises with thousands of employees. Solutions like Workwear Plus from ActiveOps. Workwear Plus builds on our 20 years of experience supporting service operations to give you a 360 degree view of your operations, helping you turn operations management from a guessing game into a game changing source of efficiency and value. Employees are empowered to manage their days and weeks, feeling accomplished, confident, and able to balance work and personal life. Wherever your organization or customers live and work, ActiveOps is ready to help you deliver world-class service and employee engagement to help your company thrive. ActiveOps. See further. Know more. Move faster.